Stay tuned for the biggest fish, the hottest bites, this week here on In-Depth Outdoors. With James Holst and Pat McSherry and the rest of the IDO fishing team. We're headed to the best fisheries across the upper Midwest and Canada. We'll fish longer, explore unfished bodies of water, and go further off the beaten path in search of the hottest bites in fresh water. This is In-Depth Outdoors. Good morning, everyone. James Holst here with In-Depth Outdoors. It's week nine of our broadcast season here on Fox Sports North. And we're about two and a half months deep into our ice fishing portion of our broadcast season. And as I was thinking about how to introduce today's show, I thought to myself, I really wanted to summarize what many of us have been experiencing out there on the ice. And I think I found a good way to do that. The week before Thanksgiving, we shot a show on Upper Red Lake. Uh, we did so on about eight to nine inches of ice. And that's the most ice we've been on as a crew since that time. So that was the last week of November. And here we are, middle of January, and we've had such warm weather across the ice belt, it's getting harder and harder to find a place to fish. So uh, what we do have coming that's gonna really save our bacon is some cold weather. So by the time this episode airs, some relief should be settling in on the upper Midwest and start to make that ice we need to get fully engaged back into the ice fishing season. Now, today's episode, we're headed to southern Wisconsin. We're gonna be fishing with one of our favorite guys, PJ Vick, and we're gonna be targeting the Pete and Well Flowage. Now this is a reservoir on the Wisconsin River. It's got tremendous catfish, crappie, and walleye populations. We're gonna be targeting the walleye uh, using a combination of uh, jigging baits and of course the iFish Pro. So stick around, we get on a nice bunch of fish today in southern Wisconsin on the Pete and Well Flowage with PJ Vick. <laughs> PJ. Go oh. flag. Still going, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Fish there. Is your fish? Check that drag. I didn't before we okay. set him. Perfect. You liking it? Yeah. Come on, fish be the. Oh! Fish on. Feels like a very nice start, too. Big head shakes. So let's talk slots. Ooh. Let's talk Ooh. what you can keep here for fish. Well, it, here. We got a five fish total daily limit. Yep. Oh, there it is. Oh, nice. There's your candy to start today. PJ, <laughs> look at that thing. <laughs> Aren't they built? Yeah, we'll talk about limits later. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, that's a beautiful fish. God, that's a phenomenal start to the day. Yes, and, sure. and this has been pretty common lately. I mean, the, the slot size fish. Yep. The slot limit is definitely working here in the Pete Well Flow. 20 to 28s or? 20 to 28 gotcha. is a no go. Right. We have to release those Protect. fish. Yep. One fish over 28, and then 15 to 20 is, gotcha. is the keep slot. So, I mean, and awesome fish. That's what's producing. I'll get and the, bigger. I'll get the middles. <laughs> right. <laughs> so it's good. We stick it up for 20 with girt like yeah. that, it'll be a special fish. Oh, yeah, definitely. All right. Get that girl back. Oh, she's happy. So am I. Excellent. James is getting me some bait. So what we got going on here is we're up on the peat and well flowage. And the flowage is pretty much just the Wisconsin River dammed up to create a lake. So what we have here is the old abandoned river channel that we're fishing on. Um, what we're looking for and what we did today is usually any irregularity in that channel uh, little bump outs, uh, outside corners, you know, tight spots in the break where it drops from shallow water to deep water fastest. Those are the areas we're keying on. And these fish are looking to hang out uh, in, in a deeper hole right now. And so we're at the first deepest water they get to coming down the system. So, Very cool. And they're here. What size? Uh, that was a, a black tail chub? Yeah, it's a black tail chub, yep. So we're running blacktails today. The the fish all over 
in Wisconsin just seem to love them. We do have suckers along too. Uh, blacktails have been definitely out producing. So. Gotcha. Yeah, I would say I had a medium size. Well, they, they look similar to a red tail. They just don't have a red tail. Right, right. Yeah, it is a very similar idea. One of them. Kind of a little guy. You don't mind if I take one of these dead shiners and feed it to your buddy over there, no, do you? No, he would love that. <laughs> <laughs> the pet seagull. The pet seagull, right? <laughs> yeah, he's been hanging out with me lately. <laughs> Some people would say that we've got him trained, but it's definitely the other way around. <laughs> he knows how this program works. Good job, bird. The bird called that one. <laughs> oh, oh yeah. fish on. Yes, it is. All right. Let it be one of them good ones. Come on, you. Doesn't feel like a giant yet. Of course, I am fishing one of these heavier oh, here he is. LTPs. Nice fish. Yes, they're all nice. Really nice fish. Super. <laughs> there you go, bud. I tell you what. These fish are fat. Yeah. They're they, feisty. They're well fed. And that one would be one, one of those uh, upper keep. end that you could keep. Sure. Yep. Well, this is a lucky fish. Yeah. Because uh, I've still got a few from Bay the Knock. I, I got to deal with. I do as well. <laughs> so I'm good to go. I'm going to fire that one back. Okay, cool. See you later. Nice, healthy fish, man. Thank you. Strike Master introduces the new Lithium 40 Volt. Everything you've ever wanted in an ice auger. With a 40% increase in cutting speed over the competition and up to 100 holes per charge, the Lithium 40 Volt has the power and stamina you need and the two amp rapid charger that can bring a fully discharged 40 volt battery pack to a full charge in as little as two and a half hours. The new Lithium 40 Volt, only from Strike Master. At Eskimo, we have the tools to help you enjoy your time on the ice. They say man needs food, clothing, and shelter. When it comes to shelter, we like the Outbreak 450i with its full-size no-trip door that's nearly 74% bigger than a standard door, making it much easier to load and unload. With 75 square feet of fishable area, you'll be warm and comfortable during your day on the ice. Check out the Outbreak 450i and our full line of products at GetEskimo.com. From the first time you pick up a tuned up custom rod, you'll know you're holding something special. A rod not mass produced, but built one at a time by the hands of gifted craftsmen. Rods like the Precision, ice fishing's most versatile multi-species rod, or the Precision Noodle with a tip so sensitive you'll never fish a spring bobber again. And the Commander, the rod that's never met a big fish it couldn't best. Tuned up custom rods, ice rods handcrafted for you and the way you fish. This winter, set a trap for your next trophy with iFish Pro. The new iFish Pro 2.0 now offers an insulated base to help keep your ice hole from icing over and an upgraded rod holder for use with longer, heavier rods. Complete your ice fishing arsenal with iFish Pro, tactical ice gear that puts the fight back into tip-up fishing. Find iFish Pro online at iFishPro.com or at your favorite sporting goods retailer. Right behind us. Oh, yeah, that's a good one. That's a good one. He didn't run with it very far. No, no. Flag popped up when I turned around. I can tell it's a very nice fish, though. Yeah, when I turned around, that, that line wasn't going down at all. No, no. Ooh, yeah. Ooh, Ooh yeah. yeah. <laughs> PJ's happy. <laughs> this is the right one. Oh, yeah. Sinker. Nice. That's a nice one, man. <laughs> Gotta wrestle him out. Dude. What a fatty. Look at that. <laughs> Not missed many meals no. on that one. Man. Woo. Jeez. That's like a pre-spawn, you know, pull it, it four is. fish. It, and it, I mean, it looks like a, a spring build to it. It really does. It just, I like this place. Let's see if I can pop yeah. that thing out. Right. Beautiful. That went man. well. I mean, that thing has got a, just a <laughs> gut. It does have a gut on it. Wow. What an awesome fish. I'll get you a middle. All right. I'm going to get that one back. Wow. Excellent fish. Look at that thing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh flags up over here. Another one. All yep. right. Get that one back and go for the other one. Let's see what we 
got here. There we go. We got them. Ooh, feels like another really nice fish. A lot of head shaking. Just having a, a great flurry of action here. Oh, there we go. There he is. Oh, yeah. Beautiful. Come here, buddy. Nice. All right. Now, out here on the peat and well, the midday is typically the bite window. Um, with this real stained water, once you get the sun high up in the sky, that's usually what sets off these fish. And that's just another beautiful example. Probably about uh, 19, I'd say. Just a really nice, healthy fish. We'll get that one back. There we go. All right. I want to talk quick about a, uh, a product I've got in my hand here that I have absolutely no connection with. Uh, I, I'm not sponsored by them, uh, but I really like it. I'm going to share it with you here today. Uh, there's a company in Excelsior, Minnesota, owned by Bob Schmidt. Two-man outfit, uh, very small, and they make custom uh, tackle storage. I'm always looking for better ways to store my tackle. When I'm running around out there on the ice, things are always getting beat up. Um, I keep a lot of my gear or have in the past in just regular tackle trays. They do not do well in cold weather. I usually end up with just lots of pieces of broken plastic. And what I've got here is um, if you call up just in case, uh, you can tell them how many slots you want and how deep you want each one of those compartments to be. And they'll make you a custom case. Uh, this one's for my rip and wraps and uh, built out of polycarbonate, very durable does a phenomenal job of storing all my rip and wraps. And what I really like about it is uh, I can see in an instant what I have in this box. So if you're looking for a better way uh, to store tackle out on the ice or in the boat, uh, give this a look. I think you're gonna be really impressed. You can get it your way. They'll make anything you want from you know, small boxes like this to I've worked with them in the past to make uh, you know, large musky boxes. So a really cool product that's really well made, uh, all hand done custom to your specs. And that's just in case in Excelsior, Minnesota. With the release of the tungsten bullfly jig from BMC, your panfish presentation just got buggier. By creating a spot-on invertebrate imitator destined to fool the most wary panfish, the tungsten bullfly jig is available in nine colors to further accommodate today's angling, including four metallic finishes and five ultra glow colors, which hold a charge up to 15 minutes. This winter, match the hatch and outsmart the most finicky panfish with the BMC bullfly jig. Okuma Fishing Tackle offers a complete lineup of reels for the die-hard ice angler. The Okuma Samar 10 and Inspira 20 are a perfect match with your favorite panfish or walleye ice fishing rod. Both feature a long stem handle that fits comfortably in a gloved hand. Cyclonic flow rotor technology that throws water off the reel to minimize ice buildup. And a drag system optimized for use in extreme conditions. Everywhere, every day, every fish. Okuma Fishing Tackle is inspired fishing. Glacial Lake Stock is your number one source for Yeti ice houses. With our large inventory of new and used Yetis, our experienced staff will help you select the perfect model for the way you fish. From sale to service, Glacial Lake Stock has you covered. As an authorized Yeti service center, we can handle all your service or warranty needs and work to keep you fishing all winter long. Stop in today or check us out online at GlacialLakeStock.com and make this ice season your most enjoyable and comfortable ever. For this winter's next cold front, the new Strike Master Surface Suit offers features ice anglers demand. The Surface Suit is 100% waterproof, windproof, has an adjustable hem, and is constructed using a 100% nylon Oxford shell that offers unmatched durability. The Surface Suit combines incredible warmth with the confidence that comes from knowing Strike Master's stay on surface flotation will be there, providing up to two hours of flotation when the jacket and bibs are worn as a pair. Strike Master, the hottest brand on the ice. Oh, I finally got him. <laughs> I tell you what, PJ. Decent one? Finally coaxed one. We've had so many fish coming in on these <laughs> ripping wraps. 
Just haven't decided to eat yet. That's one thing about the peat. Well, you, you do get a lot there of foul heat. Nice. nice. Very nice fish. Heck yeah. Thank you. The old standby green UV. Yes, sir. <laughs> God, he just lunch boxed that one. Yeah, he did. I started out pink, went and tried about six other different colors and yep. circled back. You don't fish this much in the summer, do you? I don't come out here too much in the summer. I mean, this is a, a body of water that I really like to target early ice. Not as, not as fat as some of the other ones, yeah. but a nice fish regardless. Yeah, great quality. There's throwing up that fin for us. Mm -hmm. We'll fire that one back. See you later. Banker's hours walleyes, I'll take it. Yeah, I know, midday bite, I, you can't beat that on the flowage. Right. <laughs> All right. Good job. And it seemed like, you know, anything big or hard or aggressive, they don't run away, they just don't eat it. They that don't. one was just a right. kind of a shimmy. Coaxing. Coax, Coaxing eat it. Them. Yeah. Number six, rip and wrap. I think I heard uh, PJ mention it earlier, probably the, the biggest thing about that bait, you know, it's a bright color, but it's got that great rattle to it. You know, very often what you'll have on a body of water like this, so you fish these aggressive baits, you got your dead sticks down, you're gonna get most of your fish on your dead sticks. But when it comes time to stick a real giant, this is kind of invariably what you catch it on a bigger, larger profile, more aggressive bait. Like, get come on, on, Fred! Get on, James! Fred, come along! Oh, oh there he is! Heck yeah! <laughs> oh, not a giant. No. I think it's gonna be Ooh. one of those. Well, you got a little more weight the there. Now, yep. Man, these things are midday. Yeah, they were really... midday aggressive. Ooh, nice fish. Yep. Heck yeah! Right on. Oh. Excellent. We could cool. put together a nice mess of fish yeah, today, but yeah, definitely. And just great quality. I mean, mm -hmm. a lot of them in that 18 to almost 20 size range, and and of course some beautiful slots. You know, they really fill out. That's you know, that's that 18, 19 inch fish maybe. You can still see where they got some growing to do. It's like you get yeah. past that 20 inches and yeah. something just and happens. <laughs> <laughs> see you bye. Yeah. Right. In depth outdoors. Spot on the spot ID. On today's Spot on the Spot ID, we're taking a look at peat and well flowage uh, using the Fish Smart app that uses that Lake Master map data. And we're gonna show you what to look for if you wanna put some really nice walleye on the ice. So as you can see here, this is just the wide spot in the Wisconsin River. We've got the river flowing in on this end, a dam on that end that is backing everything up. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna zoom in you can really start to see, I've, I've highlighted a depth range from about 18 to 25 feet, and you can see the remnants of the old river channel winding through this body of water. And that really is the key uh, area to focus if you're looking to put some really nice walleyes on the ice. Now, during our time spent on Lake Petenwell, what we focused our time on was the old river channel. And you can see it here. Shallow flat up top, shallow flat on this side as well, and a ribbon of deeper water that runs through the middle of those shallow flats. There's a number of these old river channels and they can all hold fish. What we were looking for and what very often is one of those keys to start our focus is you're looking for really steep breaks. Now you're also gonna wanna keep in mind that there's light current coming through this body of water as well current is coming from this direction, sweeping around through these channels. It's not an overwhelming amount of current, but it will help determine where those fish are gonna set up and feed. What we found was the fish more, were more likely to be out of the current on the backside of a turn near a steep break. So this area here would be one that would be uh, worth a look for sure. As the current would move through this river channel and start to bounce and head towards this side, this steep break with this area here where the fish could seek refuge out of that mild current would be another key area to look for. So I'm gonna zoom in a little further. We'll take a look at one of those key areas. So here you have it. Backside of a river turn, current is sweeping over here, providing a little refuge from that light current over here. 
steep break, which uh, seems to um, uh, concentrate the movement of fish. They're gonna work along that edge versus easily spreading out up onto the edge of the flat. Uh, where I would concentrate my efforts in this area would be right on the edge of the break, right where that packed uh, set of contour lines meets the deeper water, and we would set up our tip-ups in a given depth range right in that area. So keep these generalized ideas in mind. Uh, it's really a, a pattern for success out on Petenwell, and do yourself a favor, stay away from the crowds. These fish, uh, even though you're fishing in fairly stained and fairly deep water, they're also very pressure sensitive. A group or two of people that's being quiet in a given area isn't gonna monkey things up, but you start getting vehicle traffic and uh, more groups out in a given area, and those fish are gone in a very short amount of time. So if you find that a given area starts to dry up or the fish become very uh, negative or neutral to your presentation, chances are it's that newly arrived fishing pressure. So get yourself out there and do some exploring. Put these tips to use and I guarantee you, you're gonna be very successful out there on Petenwell. Randall GM in Aiken, Minnesota's only haggle-free Chevrolet, Buick, and GMC dealer is a proud sponsor of In-Depth Outdoors TV. Our Brandle value price ensures that you don't have to spend your entire day haggling to get a great deal. And every new vehicle comes with our exclusive gimmick-free lifetime powertrain warranty. Whether you're in need of service, sales, parts, or body shop repair, stop by our state-of-the-art facility in Aiken or visit us 24-7 at BrandleGM.com. Introducing the Light Flight Laser Drill Unit by StrikeMaster. The Light Flight, the laser drill unit that offers a nearly 40% reduction in weight without sacrificing cutting speed. Paired with any quality brushless electric drill or any StrikeMaster powerhead, the Light Flight features a full length flight and molded blade carriage that ensures your laser blades will always stay at the perfect cutting angle. Less weight, less fatigue, more holes in less time. The Light Flight Laser Drill Unit by StrikeMaster, the hottest brand on the ice. Stop ice formation in its tracks down to 20 degrees below zero with the new Ice Defense Pro Series from Cold Nation Outdoors. Lightweight and highly portable, Ice Defense is compatible with all flasher and camera brands. Ice Defense draws in warmer water from below to circulate at the top of your hole, creating a powerful thermal flow to melt away ice, slush, and snow. Spend time fighting the fish, not an icy hole. Ice Defense, own the cold. Here we go. Yep. Decent walleye. What I've been playing around with is just alternative lures here. Switched over to a, a tumbler spoon. That same glow pink, UV pink. That's been kind of our hot color on the rip and wraps. And what we're finding is we're needing to downsize and try to find ways to get these fish on the jigging uh, the rods. Uh, we're having no problem catching fish on the set lines. But uh, be a decent eater there if we were keeping today, which we're not. Later, dude. And here's that tingler spoon. It's definitely a flutter style spoon. Not a lot of weight to it, a lot of surface area. Uh, you drop it in the water column and it's just all over the place. Now that tingler spoon, that weighs 3 16 of an ounce. It's pretty big, it's got a large profile to it, but it doesn't weigh a lot. What I was thinking was it would have that nice aggressive wobble to it, but it doesn't weigh very much. The hits we're getting right now are just, they're rather subtle. So I didn't want to put down a bait that had a lot of mass to it. Uh, I wanted that fish to be able to inhale that bait pretty easily because they're just not that aggressive right now. Uh, could change in the next 10 minutes, but right now they're a little off. So we're kind of throwing some different ideas at the fish and that one's working. Oh, there I go. This is going to be a good pretty one. good one, PJ. All right. Beautiful Come on up fish. here, big fatty. Yeah. That was a whole minnow. I'm trying to unlock the secret code here, right? Yeah. That was a whole minnow on that 360 <laughs> tumbler spoon. <laughs> <laughs> Just lunchboxed it. Yeah. Yeah, you didn't even work that one that hard. It, it... Well, we've marked so many fish today. I'm not even, yeah. you know, doing the, hey, here's a marking a fish yeah. anymore. Saw it come in and it boiled up nice. Not as big as some of them, but yep. I knew it was going to be a decent one. Great chunky. Yeah, when you're when they're coming up and they're acting aggressive towards your bait, but they're not closing, there's something that they're going to eat. 
that one wanted that and yeah. just as simple as just putting a whole minnow on there and who knows yeah. i'll put it back down there experiment some more the next fish might just pff, go away <laughs> you never know but i feel good about this one anyway yeah, definitely <laughs> all right i'm gonna fire that one back Fly. He's gaining on me. He's gaining on me. <laughs> I didn't see any movement, but no. you can see the line is way under the water. Yeah, I see that. It's definitely down that way. Drag is good. Oh, there, yeah. there he is. A little better fish. Yeah, that's got a nice bend to it. Yes, sir. Good head shakes. Come on now. So this is what we've seen all day is like little peaks flurries. and flurries in the bite window, which is so typical for out here. It's gonna be a nice fish. I hope so. I think I got a good hook into him. Yeah. Oh, here. Oh okay. yeah. Very nice. Excellent. Money. Beautiful. Oh, here you go. Hold that. Yes. Thank you. Man, they are thick, <laughs> beasty fish. Yeah, they are. And that one, he swallowed that black tail. Come here, you. That's kind of been the deal, though. They just wolf, wolf it right down. If, there. if they're a bigger one, yep. it's gone. Yep. Yeah, see where that, boop, easy cheesy. Beautiful. I don't know, what do you think? Parting gift, let him keep the chub? <laughs> he worked for it. <laughs> right. Great fish, one yeah. of many. Yeah. It's been a great day. It here. has been a great day with some really nice fish on the top end. So. We forgot the minnow bucket. Of course. I did that on purpose because if we bring the minnow bucket, then there's not a fish there. That's oh, just you're right. the way it's it been works. almost like every time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll grab it. So that brings us to the end of today's show. As always, we had a phenomenal time out there on the ice with PJ. He's a fantastic fishing partner, and he was uh, wonderful enough to share with us what is truly unique and special about peat and well flowage. The size, the girth of these fish is incredibly impressive. And it's one of those bodies of water where if you're within driving distance, it's three hours for us from the Twin Cities, this is a body of water worth checking out. So we've got some cold weather coming. It's gonna provide some relief all across the ice belt and open up all those opportunities that many of us have been hoping for. So thanks for tuning in this week. We'll see you next time here on In-Depth Outdoors. For more info on the latest fish reports, gear recommendations, and hottest techniques, connect with us online at indepthoutdoors.com or follow us on Facebook at In-Depth Outdoors. And if you enjoyed today's show, be sure to let our sponsors know.